This video covers the first two chapters of the book Understanding and Using English Grammar, written by Betty Azer and Stacy Hagan. Students don't need to fear memorizing 16 verb tenses to communicate. This is the core verb system for communication. So you have the simple present, we will cover it today, simple past, present perfect, present continuous, and simple future. If students know this core verb system, they will be able to communicate pretty well. This lesson today covers present and past, simple and progressive. So we will cover the simple present, present progressive, simple past, past progressive. And we will touch up some troublesome verbs like raise versus rise, set versus sit, lay versus lie. Let's start with the simple present. Since most of you are native speakers, I do understand that you know how to use the simple present really well. And one of the reasons to do that, it's because sometimes we have this misconception that the form is the problem. Students will struggle with the form and that's not always true. Sometimes they know how to recite the form, they know how to use a uh, verb tense, but they don't understand when to use it, the meaning of it. Is a pronoun, can be a subject pronoun,
Before going to the next chapter, it's important to stop and ponder the problems students may face using the simple present. And based on my experience, I have to warn you that the third person singular, that S or ES, such as uses, you know, adding that sound of the S or a Z at the end or is, it could be a problem. Especially when they speak, probably not when they write. And my best piece of advice is that you should not be concerned with that. Several studies show that that feature uh, will be acquired later in the learning process. Second topic of the day, present progressive. Let's go back to our pie chart. Here you have the form. The present progressive is uh, comprised of any kind of subject plus the verb to be. What is the verb to be? Am, is, or are. Plus a bare infinitive of a verb. Remember what it is? Like, instead of saying to play, you drop the two, then you have the bare infinitive of a verb, play, plus ing. Remember, the ing is going to be attached to the bare infinitive. Then we have the uses of the present progressive. Anything in the progress now or generally in progress now, this week, month of year. Why do we use it? Well, it draws attention to continuity of an action rather than its completion. And the meaning, it expresses an action that is in progress at the moment of speaking. Let's see some examples. He is always running to his mother. Here you have an adverb, always drawing attention of continuity and running here. It says that it's going on all the time. He is working in his cellar today. It stresses continuity of an action to... Susan is writing another book this year. So it's in progress now. Number four, I live in Boston versus I am living in Boston. You need to be careful with this because students will try to say I am living in Boston. A verb which in its own meaning already expresses a continuity does not need a progressive form. And that's the case of the verb to live. So you need to encourage the students to say, I live in Boston, because they will try to say, I am living in Boston most of the time. And finally, we go to most problems students may face. Distance, uh, spelling could be a problem. The ING rules, we have lots of rules. If you check your book, you will find a list of the rules. And also pronunciation, the ING pronunciation. But in general, it's a fairly easy grammar point to learn. Let's talk about the simple past. So you have the form, subject, plus verb, plus ed attached to the verb. It shows the past form for regular verbs. If it's an irregular verb, students have to memorize the form. It has three types of pronunciation. T sound, d sound, or id. It's used to express completed events, habitual past actions to show remoteness because it excludes the present. It also expresses an action that began and ended at a particular time in the past. That's the meaning of it. Let's see some examples. Last week, I listened to a famous jazz trumpeter at a local community college. So here you have our timeline. This is now. And I listened to the jazz player last week. So it began and ended in the past. Some examples, I went down the street yesterday. This is a completed event in the past. Whenever Rocky went down the street, the people cheered. This is a habitual action in the past. Now let's talk about some problems. Most problems you will find with the past tense and that concludes chapters one and two.
topic now is past progressive. So the form you have a subject, verb to be in the past. What is that? That would be was or were plus a bare infinitive with ing attached to it. It's used with two actions in the past, one longer than the other. I'll show you some examples soon. It's also used to specify an interruption on the longer action. Meaning, two actions occurred at the same time, but one began earlier and was in progress when the other occurred. Let's see examples. I was walking down the street when it began to rain. One action began earlier. Which one? I was walking down the street and was in progress when the other action occurred. It began to rain. At 8 o'clock last night, I was studying. My studying began before 8, was in progress at that time, and probably continued. While I was studying in one room of our apartment, my roommate was having a party in the other room. Not very nice. But here, the past progressive is used in both parts of a sentence because both actions are in progress simultaneously. Let's talk about some troublesome verbs. Raise versus rise, set versus sit, lay versus lie. These verbs can be a problem to even native speakers. In order to understand them, we need to understand what transitive and intransitive verbs are. Transitive verbs are verbs that require what we call a complement. So you need something after it. Let's see some examples. If I say, I buy what? Groceries every Saturday. So it's a transitive verb. But if I say Jesus died, that's done. Jesus died. You don't need anything else after it. Or if I say Jesus died, but he rose again. So to rise is an intransitive verb. It's done. You don't need anything else after it. So raise would be a transitive verb. It needs a complement. It needs something after it. Let's see the example. Tom raised what? His hand. So I need to use raised in this case. Now, if I say the sun rises, done. Although I can say the sun rises in the east, I don't necessarily have to say in the east. I can just say the sun rises. That's done. Let's see set. I will set. It's incomplete. I will set what? I will set the book on the desk. But if I say I sit, done. I don't need to say I sit in the front row. That's an adjunct in the front row. It's something that I wanted to add. Remember linguistics? Then I have lay. I am laying what? The book on the desk. I need something after laying. But if I say he is lying, that's a complete action. I can add something if I want and I say he's lying on his bed. But it's optional. And that concludes chapters one and two.